Howdy hi. Happy blessed October 3rd. If you're unfamiliar with my annual Mean Girls related videos, then you might be a recent convert because I actually didn't get around to posting one last year. I did mean to, it just got away from me, but this was the plan all along to revisit the garbage movie that started it all. Mean Girls 2 as a Garbage Movie was my first attempt at scripted content, but really my first attempt at any sort of wide reach content. All that preceded it were Teen Wolf reaction videos for at Studio Cruz followers, my sister's wedding video, and a Bughead edit, which remains my third most popular video overall. My first most popular video is the one about Mean Girls 2, and to this day, according to YouTube Studio, it always ranks within the top three of my most viewed videos within each 48 hours. I recognize that I was lucky to blow up on my first try, and I wake up every day grateful that on a random weekend during my brief stint in college, I thought, what if I make a YouTube video about Mean Girls 2? I really hit the jackpot as far as bad movies to target because back then nobody else had covered it. Everyone who knew of it hated it, and anyone who didn't was shocked to find out. I still get comments on the daily from people like, hold the phone there's a Mean Girls too. That being said, I came up just before the period of time when I feel like FilmTube got really introspective about online media criticism. In the years following the height of the movie dumpster, a lot of thought-provoking videos came out about objectivity or why CinemaSins sucks. I'd like to think that in the past five years, as I've gone from 18 to 23 years old, my approach has improved, both because I internalized that discourse and through practice. I mean, of course my first attempts weren't going to be my finest, even if they would be my most successful. All of this is to say that if you follow me on Twitter and occasionally see me shade my old content, that's because I want it to be known that I don't stand behind everything I've ever said. Luckily, now that I'm going on 24, I'm likely perfect and won't change my mind ever again. Hence why now is the perfect time to react to my first movie review and update you as to what I agree and disagree with myself about. Part of me thinks it's probably better than in my memory because I haven't rewatched it in forever. I tend not to rewatch any of my own videos. It's extremely cringe inducing, but even when I do, there's a statute of limitations on how far I'm willing to go back. I'm making an exception today for what might actually be the last annual Mean Girls installment, unless I get a lot of pushback for that. But first, a word from our sponsor. This video is brought to you by NordPass, a password manager. So you've probably heard not to use the same password for everything because then if one of your accounts is breached, all of your accounts are breached. If you haven't heard that, you're hearing it now, but I bet you didn't actually go on to diversify your passwords because you simply can't remember that many unique passwords. NordPass is your solution because it stores all of them in one place, which means you technically only have to remember your NordPass password. Don't worry, it's a zero-knowledge system, meaning nobody but you, not even the NordPass team, can access your information. But it's not just a useful tool for storing passwords, it can also help you generate secure ones or test the health of those you already have in use. Then, once your passwords are decided and stored, it autofills them for you. By clicking the link in my description, Description, nordpass.com slash julia cudney and or using my code julia cudney you can get the best two-year plan for all of that plus four additional months free okay i guess i'm gonna put my earphones on and screen record i don't usually react to stuff this is weird i'm afraid to press play i'm so afraid to press play mainly because you know i'm not just re-watching this I'm rewatching it with you and I know that you're right now a camera, um, but in the future you will be a person watching this. And worse than like just me watching my own videos is other people playing them in front of me. And this is kind of what that feels like. Just knowing that you're gonna see me watching me. And you're also gonna be watching me watching me. I don't like that. <sighs> okay, it's what we're here to do. At least we start with a clip of, um, I should learn her name because I always called her Tess from Camp Bronk and I kind of feel like that's disrespectful now. Um, 
Girls to cast Megan Martin. You know, I criticized her acting in this video and I got comments saying that she did voiceover acting for a video game and people thought she was good at that. So, you know, good for, I forgot her name, uh, Megan Martin, right? When I first read the script for it, I was like, they're making a sequel. I don't know how I feel about the fish eye filter. <laughs> I used that on every single video. I made it a point because people loved it. The fish eye filter and then I would use pitch effects. I do believe I used to open a lot of my garbage movie videos with like a clip of a cast interview where they just didn't actually seem that excited about it. In this interview, she didn't seem like she hated the movie or anything like obviously she followed up this statement by saying like at first when i read the script i was like they're making a sequel but then i really liked it blah, 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 blah. mean girls 2 is a garbage movie I can't, I can't watch this whole thing i can't watch this whole thing okay i'm choosing now to get over the fact that i hate to hear myself talk and i hate to react to myself talk opening line mean girls 2 is a garbage movie kind of iconic to start the whole series off by just stating it plainly but my worry is that throughout this whole video i do less like actually making points about it and do more just rephrasing that a hundred different ways this is bad i hate it it's a dumpster fire here's blah blah blah, blah. you know what i mean a genuine steaming pile of unredeemable trash i feel guilty even calling it mean girls too because it shouldn't be allowed to breathe the same air as the original mean girls the original mean girls is in I don't like that you can hear um, the movements of my mouth so much. I shouldn't point that out because then you'll hear it and we don't all want to hear that. An iconic teen comedy with references that will never die and I will not see its name tarnished by the beast that is its sequel. I only- Okay, I don't disagree with anything yet. It's just- It's just so hard to, <laughs> to watch for some reason. I don't even think it's really bad yet. Like, I just- I only hate one movie as much as I hate I Mean Girls 2, much. The Nut Job, and even then it's hard to say I hate them equally, like at least The Nut Job was garbage on its own, but Mean Girls 2 just had to spread its garbage all over the clueless of our generation. And <sighs> this is true that Mean Girls 2 and The Nut Job are my least favorite movies. I hate The Nut Job, it's true. I hate Mean Girls 2, it's true. Um, and added to that you know, lowest tier. I hate this movie is at this point. I've only added um, Cinderella 2000 because I, I hate Cinderella 2000 on that level. I think that's actually part of the problem of trying to carry on the garbage movie series is like eventually I had to start talking about movies that I thought were mostly bad but like I didn't have the level of vitriol that I have for Mean Girls 2 for them. So like I think that's why people like this video the best is like it came from a genuine place. Like I wanted to talk about why Mean Girls 2 sucked so much. Whereas when I talked about like Most Likely to Die, that was just a dumb horror movie I watched one time. Like I didn't care that much. Um, and my least favorite garbage movie video I ever did was Bratz because it's the only movie I think I ever watched in order to make a garbage movie video about it. There was somewhere I thought it might happen, like a uh, tall girl, but I watched Bratz because people were requesting it. For a garbage movie review. I'm getting like so far off track. I need to just wait until I say something of note. I just want to pause it because I don't want to listen to it. Whew, okay. And don't you dare tell me I only hate it because it's a sequel. That may be the reason why it keeps me up at night thinking about how inferior it is to the original, but trust me, the movie is garbage all on its own. I remember seeing some comments that were like, all you do is compare it to the original. And I actually still would stand by that because I think that using comparison to point out why certain movies are worse is like one of the easiest ways to actually narrow things down. Comparison is a very good method of critique, I think. And when something is a sequel, that is the natural mode of comparison. But even though I stand by that it's like bad on its own merits and that it's okay to compare it to the original, I don't think that I needed to start this video with like such a uh, combativeness. Don't you dare tell me like, I had no reason to believe people would tell me that. These days I think I try very hard not to poke like the bear. I guess, and I, I don't feel like I would start with a disclaimer that was so um, combative and argumentative and like 
calling you out for something that like you didn't even do yet like i don't know don't believe me look to the 32 percent audience score on rotten tomatoes okay so <laughs> i actually um i still still use um rotten tomatoes like in videos sometimes when i want to talk about how something was poorly received or whatever i'll just like flash the rotten tomatoes score on the screen there's actually a decent amount of rotten tomatoes hate out there but i still think it's perfectly fine to use as it's meant to be used of course that rotten tomatoes has nuance but i still think it's okay to reference rotten tomatoes right i don't think i would go so far as to be like this is bad and my proof is that it has a low audience score or consider the fact that get this it was filmed in 20 days. 20 days! We, we shot the movie in 20 days. Yes. Which is like, I... It's ridiculous. For filming a movie. Like, tw 20 days to shoot a movie is unheard of. What? Really? You do a commercial in 20 days? Yeah. Uh, this is one of the critiques that I, like, remember. That, like, haunts me at night and I think about it and I'm like, no, that's... It's okay that it was filmed in 20 days and that doesn't actually speak to its quality at all especially like i framed it in this paragraph as mean girls is bad don't believe me look at the rotten tomato score don't believe me consider the fact that it was filmed in 20 days like that's what i just said there and i strongly disagree with that now in fact i'm gonna look up movies filmed in short time <laughs> that's not very adequate googling it just i was gonna say in a short time frame and it didn't it didn't come out that way, okay? Casablanca was filmed in two months. That's more than 20 days. I believe there's some like way shorter ones. Moonlight, 25 days. That's very close to 20 days. Memento, 25 days. Birdman, 23 days. Halloween, this is one I remember, 20 days. Yeah, basically point proven. You can film like an iconic movie in 20 days. Because if it's true that a movie filmed in a short time frame is inherently worse or at least inherently had less effort put into it, then it also has to be true that movies that were filmed for a long time are inherently better or have more effort put into them. And I don't believe that. I think that oftentimes movies with expensive reshoots are the worst because like something went wrong. <laughs> and I think what's so frustrating about it in hindsight is that I know if in this interview where I learned this information, um, she said it was filmed in 20 days and she didn't make a big deal out of it and the interviewers were like yeah okay and they moved on then i wouldn't have ever thought to be like it was filmed in 20 days and that is bad i only thought it was shocking because they acted like it was shocking and maybe it is i don't know that much about um regular production schedules but i think that what annoys me the most about this is that i believe and i don't want to take too much credit for influencing uh, the Mean Girls 2 discourse, but I don't think it's unreasonable given the number of views this video has um, versus the number of views this interview has. I checked this once. Let me see. Mean Girls 2 interview. Yeah, this is the interview where I saw it. 73,000 views versus 3 million views. I don't think that it's unreasonable for me to assume that people who bring up the critique of Mean Girls 2 that it was filmed in 20 days got that from my video. And I have seen people bring that up. I saw it on TikTok once. Um, somebody made a video about Mean Girls 2 and how it sucked. All of the comments were like, and get this, it was filmed in 20 days. And I feel like that's why this critique sticks in my mind so much because I influenced the way other people think about this movie in a way that I don't think is very fair. No wonder it's straight to DVD and literally feels like you're watching a Disney Channel original movie the whole time. Anyway. <sighs> I believe that was part of the same argument the last two points were uh mean girls 2 is bad don't believe me rotten tomato score filmed in 20 days uh direct video and i do think it's a little bit more telling if a movie is direct to video than it's rotten tomato score or that it was filmed in 20 days like i do think theatrically released movies are on average better than direct-to-video movies. I think I have this backwards though. I don't think you can tell it's bad because it's a direct-to-video movie. I think that it's likely bad because it was a direct-to-video movie in part um, because they don't have the same budget. They don't have the same production value. I stand by the second part there though which is that it feels like a Disney Channel original movie. I think that's largely because of the casting but also like 
just the way it is. I do remember getting a lot of comments on this where like Disney Channel original movies are good. Like don't insult Disney Channel original movies. And it's weird because like I agree, I love a good decom, but Mean Girls is far from a Disney Channel original movie, you know? Like you go in to High School Musical knowing that you're gonna get something flamboyant and for kids. Mean Girls 2 was a sequel to a teen movie that was kind of raunchy, you know. The movie starts out with one of those flash forward scenes with horrible narration, you know, like, you'll never guess how I ended up here. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me start at the beginning. I don't know if I can think of any movie where this technique is actually intriguing, but it's especially annoying here because right off the bat, it's abundantly clear that you're in for a cringe fest. I'm not a person who's particularly picky about acting. Like, okay, I'm about to transition into acting, but I wanted to touch on the flash forward bit. I got a lot of comments that pointed out to the uh, Emperor's New Groove. I was never a big Emperor's New Groove fan. I don't really remember how that one started. I have seen it, but sure, I I'm sure it's good. And I, I, I still actually can't think of an example that I like, but I'm sure that I have liked a movie that has done this before. As long as someone's there saying the lines, I'll suspend my disbelief for the sake of enjoying the movie. But Tess from Camp Rock has the worst line delivery I've ever heard. It's hard to ignore. She quite literally sounds like 11 year old me auditioning for the school play. But I swear, it's not like I'm selling my kidney or anything. Although that would have been less painful. <sighs> I hate hearing myself talk in this way. It feels so, um, Force and actually it's ironic that I'm criticizing acting. I feel like I'm acting when I'm like she literally sounds like me Like I'm putting on a very angry persona. Maybe I was angrier back then. I don't think I I don't think I was though I think I was exactly how I am now. I would probably never like Choose an actor in a movie and be like they suck and this sucks Like I wouldn't do that anymore. It feels so mean and actually one of my worst fears is that Tess from Camp Rock <laughs> Megan, what's her name? Martin has seen this video. It seems so mean. Like, I don't want to be mean. But I don't know. I watch this and I feel like I'm seeing somebody who watched a lot of Cinema Sins. Somebody, and I did at the time. Um, I was like inspired by these like boy channels <laughs> who made fun of movies in a way that was very... I don't know. And I still agree. Like, I don't like the acting in this movie. I don't like her performance in this movie. I just feel like... Now I would probably be nice about it. Like, um, I think the last time I really addressed acting, which I don't do much, like I still actually kind of agree with myself at the beginning of this clip, which is like, I don't pay much attention to acting. Like if you're saying the lines, I'll move on. But the last time I addressed acting, I think was with the Gossip Girl reboot because that one did have some really noticeable bad moments. And I still think that in that instance, I was like, I'm sorry, but it sucks. Um, and that's how I would probably say things now. This was like very inspired by angry men channels. They're very angry about movies. Then they have the audacity to drag Lyndon Ashby into this mess. <laughs> this moment has actually stuck with me because I can tell that I'm like stumbling over the words Lyndon Ashby and I wish that I had redone that take. The audacity to drag Lyndon Ashby. I don't know, I was such a big Teen Wolf fan at the time that I was like, Ooh, Lyndon Ashby, but like, I don't, <laughs> I don't care if Lyndon Ashby is in Mean Girls too. I think that, um, especially because he was in Purple Hearts the other day, I don't think Lyndon Ashby is very picky, okay? It's fine, let him get the bag. This is my dad. They have to tell us he's her dad because if they didn't, we'd assume she was just hugging up on some random older guy. It's like, they think we're incapable of picking up on context clues. Why are they spoon feeding us? They don't need to spoon feed us this information. This information is very easy to understand if you pay minimal attention. I think this is why when I talk about movies now, I don't use the play-by-play -play format because it encourages pointing out things that like don't matter. The reason I hate Mean Girls 2 is not because she pointed out who her dad was. <laughs> it's at least not a big enough deal that I had to talk about it for however long I did where I was like, they don't need to spoon feed us. Like I got really angry. There was nothing, it was not that big of a deal. She drives a Vespa, so she must be edgy and cool. Like the muscle cars who think they own the road and check out every passing vehicle. Background music. Smart cars who don't fit in. 
the I'm so perky, I might shake off my tube top cutesy cars. It's like this scene is trying to remind you of the far superior movie you could be watching. You know, speaking of pointing out obvious things, like obviously that scene was trying to go for the cafeteria scene. Here are the clicks. This is that click, this is that click. And I do think that this scene is worse, but I think that's something I might do occasionally in this video. If I am correct in my memories, I think that I do say something similar to this when they're pranking and I equate it to like when they cut out the boob holes in Mean Girls and I say, is this supposed to be like this? Because Mean Girls is better at this and it's like, do you have thoughts as to why? And Mina from Cory in the House and Macy from the Jonas Brothers show. I'm starting to see a pattern here. If this is true. I think that part of the reason why this movie feels like such a Disney Channel original movie is that they like exclusively casted people that we know from kids shows and one is fine like if just Harper from Wizards of Waverly Place is in Mean Girls 2 then it's like fine but having this many it really it gives off a vibe. They wanted people to take this movie seriously they really should have dressed the plastics like how actual popular people might dress they look like they came straight out of justice. I stand by that. That was one of my favorite jokes in the video. Got a lot of comments on that one, actually. Um, it's true. I don't like the wardrobe in this movie at all. And they do look like they came straight out of justice. They must only have a fan on the left side because Miss Mako Mermaid over here is the only one getting any of the- <laughs> That's true. I wouldn't- I don't remember saying that, but that's true. Her hair is the only blowing back. They, they must have the fan over there. That was a good observation. I like that one. Who was stupid enough to hit a home run with any boy willing to play. Slut shaming. Nice. I remember saying that because I distinctly remember a comment, I don't know if it's still there, of somebody being like, look, you can't criticize it for slut shaming because Mean Girl slut shamed too. And this is something I will stand behind myself on because, and I wish I just went into greater detail on it, when Mean Girls 2 slut shames, this character specifically, um, it's slut shaming at the expense of sluts. Like it's actually genuinely, it wants you to hate her because she it kisses guys around school. But Mean Girls slut shames at the expense of slut shaming. The entire time when the girls are being really mean to each other and calling each other out for um, being sluts, they you're supposed to like gather that like we folk girls focus too much on that and like you shouldn't judge each other for that. Like in the uh assembly scene when she says like you can't call each other uh, i forgot exactly what she says hoes and skanks or it makes guys think it's okay to call you hoes and skanks i don't know if those are the two words but like in mean girls you're gathering the message that it's actually you should maybe not judge your fellow girls to put girls you know um it's slut shaming at the expense of slut shaming you're supposed to understand that what the characters are doing is wrong this movie itself hates sluts i stand by this bad but like still i could have explained that in this video that's the sort of thing i would do now but at least um you know i said that clearly my style was inspired by like angry male youtubers who made angry videos about movies i feel like even this early on that was just in my tone and like my scripting and which which is more true to me now but I at least always had like some level, even like an amateur one of like feminist perspective. I think we'll hear more about my thoughts on like what this movie says about teenage girls later. Wow, look, it's Harper. For Cause sorry, I wanted to continue with what I was just saying. I wanted to say from the beginning of my channel, I think my mission statement was like, I wanna make the type of videos that I see all these guy YouTubers make, but about like girly things, because I wanna talk about Mean Girls too. I wanna talk about, I don't know, whatever I wanted to talk about. Teen Wolf. Because that's the comment I like seeing the most. You guys sometimes tell me that you like that I take every like stupid romance movie like seriously. And that's that's what I'm here to do. Please Plays her dad too, by the way. I forgot his name. But I just rewatched all of the middle. Janitor from Scrubs. I, I wish I knew his name. Love that guy. So it was goodbye, Africa. And hello, high school. Today, everything was about to change. It was my first day at North Shore High, the last stop before Carnegie Mellon University. I always overuse chapstick. My dream chapstick. school. Say what you want about Lindsay Lohan. I'm She's just kind of black this these days, but in her heyday, she was legitimately good at what she did. I keep what thinking that? that if the leads from Mean Girls and Mean Girls 2 were swapped, this one would be good and the original would be bad. Maybe that's just because I can't stand Tess from Camera. Actually, oh, I'm gonna have an ad. Julia, what the heck, putting ads on your videos? 
Uh, this is actually probably the video I make the most money off of. Well, definitely. I gotta stop putting chapstick on. Initially, I liked what I was saying about Lindsay Lohan there. Like, including clips of Lindsay Lohan next to clips of Mean Girls 2, it does, like, the narration of Mean Girls is genuinely so good. That's one of her best performances. I don't like that I was like, say what you will about Lindsay Lohan. She's whack. What? Julia, be nice to Lindsay Lohan, okay, Julia? Oh my. Okay. <laughs> okay, give me a second. I agree with myself because I know what I was trying to say. I was trying to say that Mean Girls 2 doesn't have anything poignant to say about sexism but they still included sexism just so that the main character could like shut it down and we'd be like wow she's so cool um but that's kind of an entirely separate issue from the not like other girls issue which i do believe joe has in that scene she was simply being like don't be sexist to me i can wood shop um <laughs> okay okay i right, moving on reminded that this is a knockoff version of one of the best comedies of all time it might as well put text on the screen that says just go watch the real movie yeah but yeah looking at them side by side that's honestly i think the most the best points i make in this video is when i just play the clips side by side it's like yeah mean girls is better it's well directed it's better written it's better acted like of course like there it is but those are the main things that create the differences between them it's not all of these random things i'm bringing into it i don't know i don't know this wouldn't happen in real life look how oh i was waiting for that one of course i would say that that's actually one of the things i regret the most about all of my girls movie videos or at least the early ones i said that probably in every video this wouldn't happen in real life Ugh, that is not a critique of a movie that isn't not on its own cool she is did you forget how cool she is Okay, I did it again, like, it's so, how do I, how do I phrase what I meant there in a better way? Because I do think that they include, like, her getting groped and batting the guy away, um, not, like, as a way to explore the treatment of women, um, or teenage girls, but as a way to, like, bolster her. Like, she's so cool. She does not get groped and other girls get groped. I agree with myself, but I don't know how, I don't know how to express it in a way that doesn't, I feel like, I feel like an incel could watch this video and feel like we were kindred spirits, you know? You could watch me say, look, she's so cool batting that guy away and think that I think that feminism is silly and think that I think it's silly to include like the mistreatment of women in movies or like try to express those things. I think the way Mean Girls 2 did it is silly. Wow, I didn't expect to have this problem with this video. That wasn't something I foresaw. I forgot saying all that stuff. Ugh. <gasps> oh my god! Oh my god! Who did that? Who said go go Chanel? Who acts like this in real life? Oh no, not the real life argument again. I can't do this, guys. I've got to get out of here. I can't, I'm not even halfway done with the video. I pause it too much. It's because I can't stand to let it go on. Who acts like this in real life? Uh, nobody and it's not real so that's why here's the credit i'll give myself i think that this scene is overacted moving on you know one of the things that makes the real mean girls such a classic is the fact that everything is so grounded in reality certain things are slightly dramatic because it's a movie but regina george could be a real person the drama she creates and the things she says are things real life people have done and will do this girl i forgot her name already is the same as every other queen bee character you've ever seen i'm constantly distracted by how outrageous she is you know I agree that Regina is a more realistic character than the Queen Bee in this movie, who I, yeah, still don't know the name of. But for me to say that everything that Regina does is something that a real life person would do, mm. I think this is another situation where like, I'm saying something that I feel like I know what I'm trying to say and I, I wanna say it for myself now. Regina bullies in such a way that, um, has things in common with reality like she does it secretly she talks behind people's backs she's fake nice that aspect of her does feel realistic to me but then you think of like her most extreme actions and it's like no not people in real life would like 
write a burn book of insults about people and then lie about who wrote it. One of my favorite things about Mean Girls actually is that the first half is grounded in reality, but we get this like metaphorical pretend world in Katie's mind where everyone's fighting like wild animals. So one of like my favorite example from the movie is when Regina tells Katie to tell Aaron that his hair looks good pushed back. In real life, she just says, your hair looks sexy pushed back. But then in the metaphorical animal world, they are just brawling. And what the movie does is it starts out realistic and then you reach like a breaking point where it becomes like in Katie's mind, she comes out to like kids fighting and brawling. Like, why couldn't I say all of that? And instead, I just said, Regina is realistic when that's not the case. I feel like I have the same opinions that I used to and I just like, I, I know where they come from now. And I don't know if that's just a symptom of aging or like the fact that I've been doing this for so long. Maybe somebody my same age writing their first movie review would not know how to put words to how they're feeling about movies as well as they would five years later. I'll give the movie credit for one thing, this. It was Abby. Abby did it. This shot is the only thing I appreciate because the way the hand pops into frame is actually kind of humorous. But this is the only compliment I have for the movie. She just You know what's weird is like that's not <laughs> that's not even a really good shot. I think the only reason I noticed it in any way is because like I just watched some video essay probably by like every frame of painting where they talked about uh, Edgar Wright movies and how one of the ways he plays with shots is to have like things pop into frame and so I thought the hand pops into frame I like that because I just saw that in a video essay I wouldn't really praise the, <laughs> that shot <laughs> now I did not expect actually to um, find that I would have to at any point tell myself that I should have been more negative <laughs> there were a dog away in case you forgot she's evil you qualify for in-state tuition here <coughs> oh my god what happened to my tuition? Why doesn't she just, this. like, get student loans? That's what everyone else does. Like, I'm sorry your family can't pay for college, but welcome to the reality of most college students. There are no- Huh. I remember that because that's something I really disagree with now, too. I think at the time I was inclined to say that because I was in my first semester of college and I was kind of stressed about the fact that I suddenly had student loans, not knowing that I would drop out and have, like, significantly less than everybody else but like yeah i saw this um character who apparently had a college fund and got it taken away and i was like well welcome to the real world <laughs> the idea of having a college fund is like unheard of to me a college fund to lose in the first place like are you rich but like for the movie's purposes and in real life like if you have a college fund and your parent blows it on gambling or whatever i forgot race car i don't know what that guy does um then yeah that does really suck it's perfectly reasonable for this character to be upset that her um dad spent her college funds no real tears there you can't fool me tess mandy's was cool but abby's was three stories high mandy flaunted her store-bought peasant costume until she spotted abby's you know what um i don't know what i'm about to say about this scene but something that's interesting is that i really didn't explain what was going on in the movie at all like i would just put clips and then do my commentary because i think that's how they do cinema sins videos um i believe at some point in my garbage movie series i started being like okay so these are the characters this is the plot <laughs> here's what's going on and i don't think i ever did a great job at that because i would get so bored of it i really hate um writing out play-by-plays so a lot of the time i would write and then some other stuff happens and then like get to the points i wanted to talk about but i didn't explain anything about this movie if you hadn't seen mean girls 2 you would watch this and be like what is going on <laughs> Who are these people? Andy, oh my god, someone has a better parking space. I use the fisheye a lot. Hey babe, who snagged the plush disabled spot? I guess you're number two now. Two? Two? Let me tell you, nobody in the history of the universe has ever been that upset to have the second closest parking spot. You know what's weird? First of all, this was just another like she was upset about the parking spot and that's unrealistic uh who cares about that now but why didn't i take note of the fact that she was mad that she got the disabled spot that <laughs> i didn't even realize that he said that and that's why she had the closest spot that would be what i would like flag now that's weird especially when the closest is a disabled spot oh <laughs> 
okay, okay, I, I recognized it. I was like, why didn't I address that? I even root against the villains because they're so blatantly one-dimensional. Ellie, we need a little favor. Sure. Chastity? <laughs> When I put movie scenes in um, videos now, I don't use the fisheye anymore, but sometimes when I think that a character says something funny, I do just like zoom in on them and that I didn't know I did in this video. I really like that. <laughs> Why did he say sure like that? Sure. <laughs> Movies can be so much funnier if you just like zoom in. He already said yes before he started pimping your friend out. So why? Oops. Oh yeah, wait, that is weird. Okay, yeah, that's a logical inconsistency that I think is fair to point out. Happened in real life part two. This one happened in real life part two? It never happened at my school, but I actually think it's a more realistic form of bullying to sort of act like you accidentally bumped somebody's food. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and adds about to happen. <laughs> the laughing. The laughing is a little unrealistic. I think I can see why people liked this video and it's less actually my angry narration. It's just the way I edited the movie sometimes because that those laughs I um I repeated over and over because they were the ridiculous part to me and I, I should have pointed that out instead of being like this wouldn't happen in real life about like the food thing. That's something that really bothered me about F the prom was like if you're going to portray unrealistic bullying then whatever you're doing amplified bullying but to have everyone be like <laughs> <laughs> Brutal. Did she just delete the photo? Usually it takes more than one click to do that. It'll ask you if you're sure and then you have to press OK and like even if she just exited out of the photo, it's kind of misleading because the scene makes it seem like she deleted the photo and I don't know, I just think this is really dumb and they don't have an understanding of technology. remember saying that at all. That's probably my least favorite thing I've said so far. <laughs> Earlier, I thought it was a good logical inconsistency to point out because it was like in a scene, like within the dialogue for um, that guy to say, sure, I'll do you a favor. And then they like stick the sled on him, try to get him to say yes again. Like that's weird that that was in your screenplay. That's a weird thing not to notice. But here, all they want to get across is that she's not down with bullies. So she sees the bullying photo and she deletes it. But like, I don't need her to press a couple buttons to delete the picture. And what I said about the scene makes it seem like she deleted the picture. So even if she just exited out, I was looking for something like um, to point out as far like as far as logic is concerned, because that's what I would mainly see uh, the YouTubers I watched uh, cinema sins and such. I would never watch this movie and have that would never come to mind unless I was making a video in this format you know you I can't imagine watching a movie with a worse person to watch a movie with than somebody who pointed that out like live you're watching Mean Girls 2 with a friend and they're like did she delete the picture or just exit out because you would have to click the button more than once in order to delete it um but it makes it seem like she deleted it and she only pressed one but you know she would have laughed texted back or posted a status update <laughs> Uh, oh. ah. I just want to have the same reaction that I actually put there. I've redeemed myself because that's the part of the scene, not the phone and how many times you have to delete, how many times you have to click to delete a picture. The important part of that scene is that it is when they literally do the cliched phrase. <laughs> this wouldn't happen in real life part three. <sighs> okay, so, um not me and i'm you i don't believe that you cared back then either i don't believe that's why you hate mean girls too i don't well i've installed security cameras oh i'm sure those security cameras they've put so much emphasis on won't be important later in the slightest sometimes you need to set something up for the payoff right this would be as cool and funny as boob holes because boob holes was iconic and you will never ever ever match it <laughs> Why did I go? <laughs> That's another one of the situations where it's like I put the cafeteria scenes next to each other and I was like, this is bad and this is good. And that I didn't explain why. And I guess I think the reason is because 
um cutting holes in somebody's shirt is like a pretty obvious prank and if you walk around with it like it's first of all kind of funny that regina just puts it on and is like okay sure and then um for that to become a trend is i've talked so much about realism it's funny because it's so unrealistic it's like wait so this girl is so beloved that like the most ridiculous trend ever is born out of her wearing um like um color spotted clothing is actually not like it's not ridiculous you know like speaking of that trope though um i only really know it from mean girls that was one like parallel i drew to do revenge when i watched it the other day when uh what's the main guy's name when he gets exposed for cheating um and then they're able to like do a spin where it's like he's ethically non-monogamous <laughs> that gave me like such mean girls vibes i think i'm supposed to care about this relationship i think I mean, all we've seen of them was him being a dick and her sassing him for it. Like, what happened to make her stop hating him? And why does she like him besides the fact that he's hot? Like, hello? That's right. I didn't rewatch Mean Girls 2 for this video. I sort of thought I should rewatch Mean Girls 2, then watch myself talk about it, but I didn't want to. I do not ever want to watch Mean Girls 2 again. But in my memory, I would agree with that point. It's weird um, that you're sort of expected to ship them just because he's hot and they kiss and isn't that cute. Joe Mitchell is a virgin. <laughs> Why does everyone care? Why does anyone care? Uh, I why would it be give me a second to think you could point like a million scenes in mean girls and be like why does anyone care like when the burn book comes out and it's like this character made out with a hot dog um i could pause that and be like why does anyone care and it's like that's the point like we care about stupid things um and here i don't think they're trying to make that same point that main girls made this is just supposed to be like feel bad for her because she's getting bullied joe joe i'm sorry i didn't how did you set me up like that so she conveniently cuts him off before he can tell her the truth because ah uh, that's true that's actually when people say they hate the miscommunication trope i feel like this is what they're talking about even though miscommunication is like so much bigger than that and like most good stories most good like drama interpersonal stories um have to utilize miscommunication in some way but when people say they hate it they mean something like this where he's like i didn't do that and then she's like shh don't even talk to me and it's like let him say the thing because obviously he didn't do the, the thing everybody's talking about the hot new couple nick and i are the hottest couple in school not anymore what is that the gossip newsletter that she gets texted with like xoxo gossip <laughs> okay true <laughs> why did she why did she get texted that you can tell she's angry because of her power stance, squinting eyes, and Arthur meme hand. You spoiled narcissistic bitch! I get legitimately shocked every time they swear, like, slow down Disney Channel, is this really appropriate? Uh, that's true. I think that that's a consequence of it seeming like a Disney Channel original movie, is that when they actually try to do, like, teen movie stuff it feels like ah <laughs> this is not the time or place in case you forgot they're trendy and cool they have colored hair streaks now so just remember like if you forget that they're really trendy and cool and not like other girls just look to their hair okay because it's colored now because they're trendy and cool i stand by the fact that like as a protagonist she's much less interesting than katie because they want you to like think she's cool it's hard to tell the story that Mean Girls is, and not that I wanted them to tell the exact same story, but they, they kind of fall into similar um, categories. Um, it's hard to tell the same story with a character who you also want to be like the coolest girl in the room all the time. I can't tell if this movie really wants to be funny because all of its jokes fall totally flat. I mean, is the fact that he's dancing with a plant supposed to be hilarious? There's really not a punchline there. What's the joke? This is the most Disney Channel they could possibly get with their comedy. Like, somebody might as well fart and then, like, shove a pie in someone else's face. I don't know. The, the dancing plant moment. I don't think it's funny. It's true. It's true that I don't think that's funny. It's just the way I talk about it. Like, I want me in the past to give give me her opinions on comedy and why this form of comedy doesn't do it for her um whereas the mean girls form of comedy does but i i, I just like point out a scene and be like is this supposed to be funny because it, it isn't <laughs> and there's not really value in that like now i would try to explain why i don't think something's funny on the topic of comedy 
I can't remember any quotes from this movie, which is really the original's secret weapon. I mean, Mean Girls has the best quotability of just about we're really any stuck movie on ever. From you go, Glen Coco. To that is so fat. Or <laughs> on Wednesdays we were pink. Mean Girls is basically half the vocabulary of kids my age. Yeah, I can't remember a single line from this movie because it's unfunny garbage. You That's a weird one because there are lots of movies I love that I probably couldn't give you a quote, a direct quote from right now. Mean Girls is huge and has been watched over and over, a very famous movie, and that's why people remember lines from it. And, and because it's well written, like I think that's part of it. But I think there could be like a very good, um, lesser known movie that I watched as many times as, as I've seen Mean Girls 2 that I wouldn't remember a line from even if I watched it and really enjoyed it. Like I haven't been exposed to Mean Girls 2 at the level I've been exposed to Mean Girls. This is, I, I'm struggling to explain here like what my problem is with Mean Girls 2 because I keep like trying to offer these evidences that I really don't think mean anything. Rotten Tomatoes, uh, this, like, you know. If you and your friends walk in a line that blocks off the whole hallway, you're gonna get shoulder brushed to the side. Like, there's a scene similar to this in the original Mean Girls, but I'll show you the difference. Sure, they're walking, they're having a grand old time being the most popular girls in school, but there's other people around, you know? It's not like a movie, it's like real life. It's everything that's right about that movie and everything that's wrong about this movie. I kind of like this point. I think that it's okay to exit reality in a movie to do something visual. So I don't think in this scene we're supposed to be like they're at school during school hours. But you do look at this shot and it looks like silly. <laughs> because if you're going to sacrifice realism for visuals, then your visuals better like kind of rock. And I actually do really love that shot that I used from Mean Girls where they are walking down the hall but they're are other people around. I think that Wing Girls is very good at balancing like a, a level of realism with a level of um, exaggeration. We gathered our forces, but as the anti-plastics grew, Mandy started recruiting for her side. This movie is really skipping over major plot points with narration. The camera. Okay, I don't think that's fair to be like, uh, we built our side, she built her side. I don't need to see them gather every individual girl. It's okay to be like, and montage that away. I honestly don't care. The class. For the love of all the sanitary, get out of there, people! Wait, did he actually just take a picture of them? What? Th that is weird. And I believe they make a joke about him, like, being a predator later as well. It's weird that they would take their one, um, recurring actor and, like, take his character in that direction. I wonder how much sugar is in this. You did not just ask that. Oh, I get it. She's becoming the type of person she was fighting against from the beginning. Almost like another much better movie that does the same thing in a subtle and interesting way. <sighs> I think I was about to make a good point there and then I just went like, Mean Girls better. <laughs> Now that now I think I get what people meant when they commented um, that all I kept doing was comparing it to the original because at the time I thought it's okay to compare it to the original like that's comparing and contrasting is such a good way of critique and analysis um, a good way of critique and analysis I don't think that's proper grammar whatever but what I did do was I wouldn't explain what was better about Mean Girls and what was worse about Mean Girls too I would just be like this is similar to this and Mean Girls better like now if I were trying to come up with commentary to follow that clip of um, her being like I think there's sugar in this and him being like did you really just say that I think that I would come up with an entirely different takeaway because one it's a part of a trope that I really don't like which is like um, love interest characters, uh, liking a girl that can eat or hating girls that go on diets. We live in a culture that wants girls to be skinny like at all costs, except for the cost of being a little high maintenance about what you eat. Like I'm not saying I'm personally offended, I've never really paid much attention to how much sugar is in my drink, I'm just saying that movies, I, I hate this, it's such a double standard um, and I think usually when people say double standard they mean like the way different people are treated differently but it's like a double standard within the way women are treated that you're supposed to diet to stay skinny because being skinny is the most important thing you can be but dieting is annoying and girly and ugh. Would um, the generic sexist Hawkeye love interest in this movie have liked Tess from Camp Rock if she were fat? No. So, if she's obsessed with the sugar in her drink, that's on you. 
Second of all, with that scene though, is it, it's weird that that's the scene where it's supposed to be portrayed that she's becoming what she hates because what she hated about the plastics in Mean Girls too, I don't even want to call them the plastics, but what she hated about them was that they were bullies and mean, right? Not that they had diets, you know? It's, it's weird that this movie equates like every annoying girl behavior as like mean girl bad stuff. It's very unsmart. I just don't feel bad for her because I hate her. Because from the very beginning, she was an unlikable character who clearly thought she was better than all the other girls because she drives a Vespa. You mean a real bitch? Wait. I guess I don't remember what was going on around this time in the story. Oh, she was exposed for being paid to be her uh, friend's friend. Right. As much as we all might like that. As much as we all might like that, when did he become such a creep? Why? That's right. <laughs> I think that, I, I think I interpret that more creepy than it actually was. As much as we all might like that, I think he means we all hate this girl, so it would be nice if you punched her. I think that in my mind, he was like, ooh, cat fight. <laughs> I really took that in a direction. I don't think the movie was even trying to go. I challenge you. To a football game. Well, that's a strange solution. <laughs> it's true. It is weird in any scenario to be like, we're in conflict, so let's have a football game about it. Um, it's especially weird that there's not like a football mo motif in this movie, you know? Like maybe if her uh, boyfriend character, and maybe he is and I forgot, maybe if her boyfriend character was a football player and like there was some plot point where like he invited her to a game and or he, they, there was a cute scene where he was teaching her how to play football. Like I don't, um, maybe like take the love interest character aside maybe it's like um in a cinderella story how hillary duff sam is her name how she's into to baseball maybe joe watches a lot of football she's a football girl i haven't watched the movie in a long time maybe that is the case i don't think it was i don't remember that being the case that would have made it's a simple solution makes the whole thing come together it contributes to her um her cool girlness she's a football a football girl and then it makes sense why she well why it's it is you're right, Julia. It's a strange solution that she would be like, let's have a football, a football game. I realized a little too late that I no longer had any friends. You didn't notice you had no friends like a couple scenes ago when everyone stopped talking to you? <laughs> that shot of all of them looking down. <laughs> I won't be on your football team. I want something in return. I knew it. I knew it wouldn't do it for free. What do you want, Elliot? A date to the dance with Abby. So is it just one of this guy's hobbies to do techie stuff for female attention? I was gonna say Gross. that same thing if I didn't say it then in the past, I was gonna say it now. Oh, Everybody my eyeliner has been getting on my eye this whole time. Harassment lawsuit if you notice, again? Didn't. They really ruined this character, oh. didn't they? I tried to think of- That was- he had a sexual harassment lawsuit. Why would they do that to that character? Wait. Why are they getting arrested, but Tess from Camp Rock just got expelled when they thought it was her? I'm so, like, I, what? You know? In general, like, they stole the homecoming money? Like, expulsion, right? At the, uh, at the school football game in front of everybody, you got arrested, put in the back of a cop car? That is a little dramatic. All right, conclusion time. Let's see. Um, a huge reason why this movie fails in comparison to the original is apparent when you consider how different Mandy and Regina I think this are is a treated good point. in the end. Marriage. True. I forgot about that. To have her join the abstinence club and then for all of her friends to be like, we should have waited like you, cool Joe. <laughs> this is what I mean when I say this movie slut shames and mean girls use a slut shaming as like a device wow the couple i didn't care about at all ended up together yay okay i'm sc scrolling through the end now but i wanted to talk about what i said just before about the way that the movies end in regards to mandy and regina and like i sort of rolled my eyes when i again said that regina was so real but i like what i was saying and i stand by that um about how in the end of Mean Girls, and this is why I hate how every once in a while a debate pops up on Twitter about like who's actually the worst in Mean Girls. Um, because I think the point is that like actually they're all doing these things. That's why, you know, when they do the assembly, everybody has something to apologize for. People who aren't even characters in entirely different cliques 
um, have their own interpersonal dramas. Everybody is susceptible to the same shortcomings. And that's why at the end of Mean Girls, Katie has to apologize to Regina. Regina has to apologize to Katie. Actually, I don't know if she ever does, but um, she got hit by a bus, so, you know, penance. But then, you know, you get this kind of cheesy last scene where Regina walks by and then they wave at each other and it's like, they've they've overcome something together in comparison to mandy she like literally is doing community service like barely escapes prison uh and you're not supposed to feel like any sort of sympathy for her you're not supposed to feel like you know they all got sucked in to something together you're supposed to feel like that was the antagonist joe was the protagonist who made a few mistakes along the way there are good guys and bad guys and that's the end. Sometimes it just takes a little girl drama to find out who your friends are. Way to sum up your theme in the last sentence, ew. It takes a little girl drama to find out who your friends are. I don't think that's even the theme. I think the theme is that um, Joe is cool and nobody else is as cool <laughs> as Joe. I stand by that point of my analysis actually is that you're just supposed to, the whole time supposed to think Joe is so cool. I do hate her. So now that I've rewatched this entire garbage movie to take notes, I'm going to watch the real Mean Girls to cleanse myself and be reminded what it's like to watch an actual good movie. Feel free to argue with me in the comments because nobody will agree with you. This movie is universally hated. See, I don't know why I had to be so antagonistic. Like, why did I have to end the video by being like, argue with me in the comments? I now, the, the last thing I want in the entire world is for anybody to argue with me. All I want when I post videos is for everyone to agree and be like, you're so smart, we love you. But like, from the beginning, I had this tone in that video, in this video of like, I'm smarter than you and like, you can argue. Like, why was I so, why was I so mad? Like, nobody was arguing with me. All in all, because it, it just ended. Like I said at the in the intro of this video. I thought that it was worse in my memory than it actually was, but I, I think that this was pretty bad. <laughs> and it does stress me out that like 3 million people have seen this. People still find my channel through this video. I bet a lot of you, because uh, I have a lot of day one subscribers still, um, I bet a lot of you found me through this video. And if you like it, then, you know, that's that's cool. Uh, thanks. <laughs> anyway, you know, despite the fact that I, I hate this video, <laughs> I, um, I am still glad I made it and like of course it wasn't going to be the best. It was my first try ever uh, It's 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 good to look back and see how far I've come because I still get so insecure about videos And I hope I continue to improve. I don't think I'm like perfect now by any means, but It, it, it does make me feel like wow I've come a long way because I would never say half of the stuff I said in that video now. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. Remember to click the link in my description and or use my code for the best deal on NordPass.